All right, are you ready to get into Yah's Word today? I am as well. I want to invite you to open your Bibles with me to 2 Thessalonians. And we're going to begin with chapter 2 in just a moment. And as you know, we've been talking about end time events and how to be prepared for them. And we've been looking through the scripture and learning Yah's timetable, what events are going to take place when, what to look for, because it's important that you know what to look for. And then we talk about some things that you can do to be prepared. We need to be prepared. We don't want to get caught off guard. If you're not already growing your own food and have a stored up source of food and nourishment, many people, even in religion, people who profess to be believers in Yeshua or Jesus, are going to get caught off guard because there's going to be famines, there's going to be a scarcity of, of food. And then the scripture says that you cannot go and buy anything or sell anything unless you take the mark of the beast. And you don't want to take the mark of the beast or to worship uh, his image. All right. So uh, you're not going to be able to go into the grocery stores and get food for your family unless you take the mark. So you need to have a plan. And that's what we've been talking about over the last several days. And we're going to continue to talk about it as we go on through our feast season of, of Sukkot. All right, so we've studied what Daniel, Daniel, wrote about the end times. And then we've also studied what Yeshua said about the end times. And Yeshua and Daniel agree. So Torah says what? Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And so tonight we're going to take a look at what Shaul, or the Apostle Paul, wrote about end time events. And that would be our, our third witness. So we'll have plenty of witnesses to establish this timeline that we need to be aware of. So we're going to start in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. It says, As to the coming of our Master Yeshua Messiah and our gathering together to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled in mind or troubled, either by spirit, deceptive spirit, or by word, something that someone has said to them, or by letter as if from us, a forgery, as if the day of Yah has come, has already Come. So first, I want to establish the context of this chapter. The context is the coming of our Master Yeshua Messiah and our gathering together to Him. In another place, Shaul tells us that Yeshua is going to return with a shout and the voice of a chief messenger and the trumpet blast of Elohim. And the dead in Messiah will rise first, and we who are alive and remain will get caught up to meet the Master in the air. It doesn't say anything about going to heaven. We're going to meet the Master in the air, and so we shall always be with the Master. When He comes, we will be gathered together to Him, and we will always be with Him. Now, He's not going to come before the tribulation period is over and take us away so we don't have any trouble. This is not a doctrine of convenience where you never face any trouble. We're going to endure to the end and be saved, all right? The good news is that when we're walking in Yeshua and we have covenant with Yah, we can expect to be blessed, even during a very distressing, turbulent time. All right. So we also have to realize that some of us have been called to give our lives for the sake of the rain. And that's a very special honor because if you give your life for the sake of the rain, the kingdom, then you'll have a much greater resurrection. You'll have a huge reward. So we're, we're not going to just sugarcoat everything. We're going to tell you what the scripture says. And some of us may be put in certain situations where we have to be willing to give up our lives 
for the sake of the rain, but you were chosen for that. And you're chosen for the great honor of having a greater resurrection. So there's living favor, you might say grace, living grace, and there's dying grace, dying favor, all right? So if he gives you favor to live, he'll also give you favor to die. All right, so what is the context? The context is the coming of our master, Yeshua Messiah, and our gathering together to him. So it's very important that you understand the context as we endeavor to interpret what he writes here because religion has done what religion does, twisted it, all right, to make it say things Shaul never said, all right? Again, not to become easily unsettled in mind or troubled, either by spirit. You got to be careful which spirit you listen to, all right? There are many deceptive spirits out there. Or by word, you have to be careful which voice you listen to. Or by letter, as if from us. It was common in those days to send around forgeries with certain people of great influences, names on them, all right? And that had happened. As if the day of Yah has come or already has come. That was the trouble some people were facing. Let no one deceive you in any way. Now let's not read past that line. That is a charge. That is a bit of wisdom that we all need to take to heart. Let no one deceive you in any way. Don't let religion deceive you. Don't let religious men and women with influence deceive you. Don't just listen to what the preacher says and just believe everything he says. My job is to excite you to go study your Bible. And if you leave here saying, well, I don't agree with him, then I've done my job if you'll go study it out. Because you may find out that what you have believed in the past is not right. There are a lot of sincere people out there, but you can be sincere and sincerely wrong about some things. All right, let no one deceive you in any way. Notice, because the falling away is to come first. Now, I've heard some Bible teachers say the falling away is the catching up. And they want to do away with this idea of a falling away. They want to say this is the rapture. And you'll find that in context, that this is not talking about a pre-tribulation or even a mid-tribulation rapture. This is talking about a true falling away. The falling away is to come first. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the falling away. And I can tell you, we are already down the road of the falling away. Whole denominations in the religion called Christianity are splitting over abominations. Things that ought to be clear in Scripture. They're splitting. Some are going with the abomination. Why? Because they're influenced by the mystery of lawlessness. The mystery of lawlessness is a spiritual dynamic that goes unseen in the natural, except you can see the fruit of it. But you can't see Hasatan and you can't see the demons at work. And what Hasatan's goal is, is to create an environment of lawlessness into which the anti-Messiah will arise. Because if there is an environment of lawlessness on the earth and anti-Messiah arises, he's the lawless one, he will then be accepted and praised and lauded. If we're all following Torah and being obedient to the commandments and the anti-Messiah appears, he will be rejected. And so we have the mystery of lawlessness. We're going to read about it here in just a moment. That's at work even now. And so when you see religion running contrary to scripture and you say, it's right here. What are they doing? What are they thinking? They are deceived. They're under the delusion of the lawless. People who say the Torah has been abolished, they're under a delusion. People who say we don't need to observe the Ten Words, the Ten Commandments, they're not binding today. They're under a delusion. People who say, well, we don't have to worship on the seventh day 
Sabbath, we can make our Sabbath the first day. They're under a delusion. People who would prefer to keep Roman holidays instead of the Bible feasts are under a delusion. Now, when I put it that way, what do you think about most of religion today? It's under a delusion. See, broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who find that path. But narrow and difficult is the way that leads to life. And there are few who find it. Aren't you glad you're part of the few? Hallelujah. Walking in the truth. Hallelujah. And so, Shaul writes right here, the falling away is to come first. Now, that's in complete agreement with the prophet Daniel. Because we showed you in the book of Daniel how there was a falling away during the time of Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus wanted to Hellenize the splendid land. He wanted to force Greek culture on the people of Israel, force the Greek language, force the Greek literature, force the worship of the Greek deities. And there were many, many Hebrew people in those days who accepted that because they felt like it was more comfortable and more safe to go along with the pagans than to walk in the ways of Yah and walk according to Torah and be persecuted. They would rather have the easy path. And so there was a great falling away in those days. And by the way, if you've been here for the last couple of nights, then you know that Antiochus Epiphanes, Epiphanes meaning the image of a deity. Antiochus is a picture of the anti-Mashiach that is to come. And so we see about the falling away in Daniel. We also see the falling away in the teachings of Yeshua in Matthew chapter 24. We covered that last night. And we see again here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that Shaul is saying the same thing. Isn't it wonderful to be a peacemaker? You say, what do you mean by that? We're bringing peace to the scripture. We're bringing peace to the Bible. Instead of religion pitting what's called the Old Testament against what they call the New Testament. And they're at war. They don't agree. That's utter religious nonsense, folks. The Bible is one continuous agreeing revelation. What Daniel said, Yeshua quoted Daniel. What Yeshua said, Shaul echoed it. All the Bible agrees. All the Bible agrees. And by the way, Shaul established a standard in his writing. He held all Bible teachers to a certain standard. He said, if anyone teaches anything different or in disagreement to the sound words, those of our master Yeshua Messiah, so all sound doctrine is rooted in Yeshua's teaching. If you want to get an understanding of doctrine, Bible doctrine, true Bible doctrine, get it from Yeshua's teachings. He said, if anyone teaches anything different or in disagreement to the sound words, those of our master, Yeshua Messiah, then he has this list of things that they are and they're not good. And then he ends with withdraw from such. If they don't agree with Yeshua, withdraw from them. Now, if he held all of the other Bible teachers to that standard, don't you think he'd hold himself to that standard? So when you're reading Shaul in the scripture, and you get to a place where religion has taught you to pit Shaul against Yeshua? I'll tell you this. Shaul said, imitate me as I imitate Yeshua. Shaul never disagreed with Yeshua. So if you get to a place where you think Shaul is disagreeing with Yeshua, it's not Shaul's Fault. It's not his problem, it's yours. It's your interpretation's problem. Some people hate Shaul. I mean, there is a hatred of Shaul in our movement. I don't know if you've come across it, but it's out there. They, they can't stand Paul. They can't stand Shaul because they think that Shaul disagrees with Yeshua. I'm here to tell you that my experience is I've been able to make Shaul agree with Yeshua on every point. When you're doing that, you're bringing peace to the Bible. 
Let's stop making the Bible at war. Let's bring peace to the Bible in our interpretation of the Bible. And if you do that, that's a rule of thumb. If you can make the Bible be at peace, then you're in the truth. Keep that in mind. Hallelujah. The falling away is to come first. Notice, and the man of lawlessness, the man of lawlessness. There's a doctrine in our movement and in religion that says that the anti-Messiah is just a spirit. Just a spirit. They don't believe that there's a man of lawlessness. Well, I don't know what you do with this passage that we just read. Shaul says he's a man. Daniel said he's a man. The man of what? Lawlessness. Now, I love to make this point because it gets people thinking when I do. There's two camps in the world. There's the camp of the righteous led by Yeshua who obeyed his father and Torah perfectly and said, follow me. Now, he doesn't set a perfect example of obedience and say, follow me. And then say, oh, but yeah, now that I've died on the tree for you and I've been buried and raised and I've ascended to the Father, now you can just live in lawlessness. You can abolish the commandments. You don't have to obey the ten words. You don't have to love Torah. Now that I've done it all for you, you see, I did it for you so you don't have to do it. Isn't that exactly what religion says? And if you do anything... You've fallen from grace. And now you're nothing but a law keeper. Well, you know what we say. If you're not a law keeper, what are you? A law breaker. So there is one camp. It's the camp of the righteous. Yeshua is the head of the camp of the righteous. And he said, follow me. And then there's the lawless one that we're reading about right now. And that's the camp of the disobedient. And we're going to find out that there's great deception. Some people say, well, I think I know who the anti-Messiah is. He's one of our American politicians. And they've been guessing wrong for a long time. Because I'll tell you this, the most obvious one is not the one. Because anti-Mashiach cloaks himself in what? Deception. He's going to deceive you. He's going to make you think he's good. I mean, who could have a problem with world peace, right? And so he's going to look like he's doing the right things. He's going to speak eloquently. He's going to be very charismatic. If you just met the man in the gym, you'd like him. But he's going to deceive you. If you're thinking, oh, that guy's so evil, he must be the anti-Messiah. No, you've got it wrong. The most obvious one is not the one. Keep that in mind. It may be that anti-Mashiach rises up from a posture, a position that you agree with. But he's deceiving. Because the scripture says Hasatan poses or masquerades as a messenger of light. So keep that in mind. All right. So which camp do you want to be in? The camp of the righteous or the camp of the lawless? And we read today, we quoted Ezekiel chapter 36, didn't we? Where it says that Yah will empower us with his spirit and he will cause us to walk in his laws and guard his right rulings and we shall do them. Hallelujah. The falling away is to come first and the man of lawlessness is to be revealed. When is the man of lawlessness to be revealed? When the falling away has been completed. And we're in the throes of it now. All right. It says the son of destruction. Again, man, son. We're not talking about a spirit. Now there's a spirit behind it. But there is a legitimate spirit man who is the anti-Mashiach. Notice, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim. 
Well, isn't that exactly what Hasatan did and tried to do and wants to do? I'll exalt myself above the stars of the north. I'll be like the most high L. Isn't that what he said? And this anti-Mashiach is empowered by Hasatan. He has Hasatan's spirit, in essence. And so he's the same way. He opposes Elohim and he exalts himself above all that is called Elohim. Or that is worshipped, because he wants to be worshipped. He sits as Elohim in the rebuilt temple on Temple Mount. All right? Showing himself that he is Elohim. If the anti-Mashiach wants the world to think that he is Elohim, where is he going to go and what is he going to do? He's going to sit down in the rebuilt temple in Israel up on Temple Mount. And he's going to declare himself to be a deity. And that's what he's going to do. Do you not remember that I told you this while I was still with you? Now, it's important that we understand these next few verses. I don't know what translation you're reading from, but I'm going to give you a bit of a different translation that's not in most English Bibles, but it matches the Greek perfectly, okay? It says, and now you know what restrains for him to be revealed in his time. So who are we talking about? The anti-Messiah. Now we know what restrains. In other words, now we know what must come first before anti-Messiah is revealed in his time. And what must come first? We just read it. The falling away must come first. For the secret of lawlessness, your Bible may say the mystery of lawlessness, is already at work. This is Shaul speaking concerning his day that he's living in. We're 2,000 years later. And so if the mystery of lawlessness was already at work then, can you imagine what it has accomplished since then? And what is the goal of Hasatan and demon forces in the mystery of lawlessness? To create an environment of lawlessness into which the anti-Mashiach can arise and be accepted and be praised and be applauded. And that's what's happening in the earth today. Yeshua said there's going to be an increase in lawlessness. And when that happens, the love of many shall grow cold. The love of many. This is talking about the love of Elohim. How does Elohim spell love? Yeshua, quoting Torah, said, If you love me, keep my commandments. He was quoting his father. How does his father spell love? Obedience. That's why what's definitive in the new covenant is the fact that we've been empowered to be obedient, to love Yah the way he wants to be loved. Why is that important? He doesn't want another failed marriage. So Shaul is saying the secret of lawlessness, this dynamic is already at work. Notice, only until he who now restrains. We just talked about the what that restrains. The what that must come before anti-Mashiach appears is the falling away. Now, Shaul's talking about a person, a he. Only until he who now restrains, what is the context of this chapter? We established it early. It is the coming of our master, Yeshua Messiah, and our gathering together to him. So what is restraining the coming of our master, Yeshua Messiah, and our gathering together to him? Right here it says he, he, a person, is restraining. In other words, a person must come first before Yeshua returns. And who is that person that must come before Yeshua returns? The anti-Messiah. Only until he, the anti-Messiah, who now restrains the coming of our master Yeshua Messiah and our gathering together to him, comes out 
of the midst. That's a perfect translation of the Greek. So who's going to come out of the midst? Out of the midst of the people, out of the masses? Anti-Mashiach. We'll read that tomorrow night out of Revelation chapter 13. The beast comes out of the sea. The sea always in the Bible represents the masses of people. So he rises up from the midst of the masses, from the midst of the people. And that completely agrees with what Shaul is saying here. Only until he who now restrains the coming of our master Yeshua Messiah and our gathering together to him comes out of the midst of the people. Now, if you're reading just the typical English Bible, it says something different there. And that's why many Christians have built the doctrine that the, quote, Holy Spirit has to be taken out. That's utter nonsense, folks. That's utter nonsense. So now we know that Anti-Mashiach must come before Mashiach appears. Notice verse 8, and this will confirm that. And then the lawless one shall be revealed. Then you'll see him. And those of you who are paying attention will know him. We're not children of the night. We're not children of darkness. We're children of the day. We're children of the light. We have revelation. We have the scripture. We have the breath of Yah, the spirit of Yah. And the spirit of Yah is one that will inform us, give us the knowledge and the wisdom that we need to be able to know who Antimashiach is. We will know. If you're paying attention, you'll know. And then the lawless one. Again, he's called the lawless one. Do you want to walk in lawlessness? What camp does that put you in? The camp of the lawless one. And then the lawless one shall be revealed, whom the master shall consume with the, this translation says spirit, it should be the breath, because breath, wind, and spirit are all the same thing in the Bible. Whom the master shall consume with the breath of his mouth and bring to naught, notice, with the manifestation of his coming. How can he consume anti-Mashiach with the breath of his mouth and bring to naught anti-Mashiach with the manifestation of his coming if he comes before anti-Mashiach? Anti-Mashiach must come first. And that's the point that we're making tonight. We're talking about a timeline. We're, we're looking at things that we must understand to be prepared for end time events. So when you tell your family members, your friends, others, that you're obeying the Bible, why do you wear seat seats? Well, because the Bible commands us to. And by the way, I'm following Yeshua. And Yeshua wore seat seats. Oh, you're just deceived, they say. You're just, you want to obey the Bible? You're just deceived. And what I want to tell you tonight is, Hasatan has never deceived anyone into obedience. You have not been deceived to obey. Demon forces don't deceive people into obedience. This says all deceit of unrighteousness. You have not been deceived to obey Torah. You have not been deceived to keep the seventh day Sabbath. You have not been deceived to keep the Bible feast. The ones who are deceived are the ones who say all you have to do is mentally acknowledge that Jesus is the Christ and then you're saved. And if you do anything more, you've fallen from grace and you're just a law keeper. Well, you can show them in Scripture how you have not been deceived unto obedience.